So remember that uh, we are in the middle of establishing what I called uh, the analog of the uh, Lindenbaum-Tarski theorem. And that analog uh, simply says that every object uh, of constructive type theory is extensional. And the extensionality is established by um, induction or recursion over the build-up of the uh, define of the term of the definable object, and uh, I dealt uh, last time with uh, uh, one base type, namely bool, uh, the type of the two truth values, and um, we are, I'm now coming to a much more substantial case, namely the handling of the uh, pi rules. And I presuppose that uh, uh, we all know the uh, standard pi rules in type theory. I've written them up here in a notation that I hope is readable for everybody. Uh, it's not completely formal. Uh, this is the dependent function type as opposed to the um, Cartesian product operator pi. So, um, according to the general pattern, we, uh, uh, I have to associate, it, associate with each uh, definable object in type theory its uh, companion, as I called it, uh, which establishes that uh, it is extensional. Uh, and uh, that means, in particular, that I must um, uh, associate with uh, pi, with a pi construct, uh, its companion, which I will call uh, pi star. And as we saw last time, uh, in general, whenever we have a, an operator or a function of some kind, uh, then um, the number of arguments of the companion will be three times as big as the number of arguments of the operator. So that means that uh, pi star here will have six arguments. <coughs> and um, <coughs> what are these six arguments? Well, first of all, we have two sets. Uh, a is a set and A prime is a set. And we have a relation between A and A prime. And secondly, we have um, a family of sets over A. And we have a family B prime of X prime over A prime. And then we must have, um, we must relate B of X and B prime of X prime. Uh, so we need a uh, uh, heterogeneous uh, relation here, which I will call, so it's the analog of P now, but for B and B prime. So it's Q of X, X prime P, which will uh, relate B of X to B prime of X prime for X in A, X prime in A prime and P. Uh, this relation between B of X and B of X prime will depend uh, on the fact that X and X prime are related, which is to say on the proof P that X and X prime are related. So P proves P of X, X prime, the P that we have up there. So under these premises, <coughs> pi star of A, A prime P, B, B prime Q. So what should it do? Uh, well, um, it should relate uh, pi of A, B.
and pi of a prime b, b prime. So I have to define uh, what relation this is. It's a particular relation between pi of a and pi of a prime b prime. Uh, and uh, as, as always, the um, meaning is given by the introduction rule. Uh, so let me try to write it here. Um, so um, I won't repeat premises that I've already shown before. I'll just write the new premises. So now we have uh, a function b, little b, in capital B, and another one, b prime, And um, I also have a proof that um, b of x and b prime of x prime are related, provided x and x prime are related. So I, I call that proof uh, q, say, of x, x prime p. I should prove that these two are related by the relation Q that um, we have in the formation rule. So we should have Q of x, x prime P of B of x and B prime of x prime. Again, for in this context here, x in A, x prime in A prime and P, proving P of X, X prime. Well, in that case, uh, lambda B and lambda B prime should be related by this relation. So the conclusion is that we should have a proof, which I will call Lambda star, say, of B, B prime and Q, which will prove that this relation holds between lambda B and lambda of B prime. So this is the introduction rule which uh, gives the meaning to this relation. I define the relation by telling between what elements it, it holds. And I suppose you can see directly here that this is basically the axiom of function extensionality, but uh, written out in, uh, in rule form. And it's not just uh, imposed as an axiom, as is common, but uh, uh, it comes as an introduction rule following the uh, Gensen pattern of introduction, elimination, and uh, computation rules which means that we, can, we will be able to compute with the uh, extensionality axiom in this way. Now, uh, here I have um, suppressed some arguments, as we always do in mathematics, and in particular in type theory, because it gets uh, horrible to dis It's enough to display six arguments. It's already much. But uh, uh, here is a point where I have suppressed 
arguments, uh, surely. Um, these are just the last three arguments that I've written here. Really, it ought to be lambda star of a, a prime p b b prime q, and then these three last arguments, b b prime q. And that's because of the fact that uh, the lambda operator here uh, already has hidden arguments. Lambda B there is really lambda capital A capital B. B in a fully monomorphic notation and has lambda star should has three times as many arguments, which is to say uh, nine arguments, but it's good enough to work with the three last ones. So that's the introduction rule. And um, as soon as the uh, general pattern of, induct of inductive definitions is followed, it's a mechanical thing to work out uh, what the elimination rule is. Actually, those who are good at, uh, at Koch or Agda could just um, type in these introduction rules and get the elimination rule out, but of course uh, to understand it means that you have to interiorize it <laughs> in your brain and that can, no machine can do that for you, so it's less help than one might think with the machines. Uh, so the elimination rule uh, is the following. Uh, suppose now that we have a, a relation, capital D, say, of three arguments, Z, uh, Z, Z prime R, and it should be a, a relation uh, between uh, Z and Z prime uh, of type pi A, B, respectively, pi of A prime B prime. And finally, R should be a proof that they are related, which means that R should be a proof of pi star of all these arguments. Uh, I think when it's, I can write just dots there, it's the same arguments as we have had before for pi star of z and z prime. So, um, as always in type theory, we have the dependent elimination rules, and it's this dependence which comes in the third argument here. And then, um, suppose that we know that this relation holds between uh, lambda f and lambda f prime for arbitrary f and f prime. Uh, that's the same as saying that we should have a proof little d of f, f prime q, where q relates f and f prime in exactly the same way as here. So suppose we have a proof that Uh, lambda D relates lambda F and lambda F prime and lambda star of F, F prime Q for F, of course, must be in this function type and f prime in the analogous one with a prime on. And then finally q see now, now uh, q is an argument here so q is a variable and that, that means that I cannot avoid using the uh, um, higher type notation here, there, and there, 
and uh, now especially Q will range over functions of three arguments x in A, x prime in A prime and P in capital P of x, x prime. It will take those three arguments into a proof that of Q x, x prime P of f of x and f prime of x prime. So that's the um, um, minor premise in the elimination rule. Uh, and from this, uh, or rather, gi given these data, we can define a function uh, h of z, z prime r, with values in d of z, d prime r, for... Uh, in the same context, naturally, as here. So that's the elimination rule. And then the uh, equality rule, the corresponding equality rule, tell, uh, tells you how to compute um, such a defined function H when its arguments are of the form given by the introduction rule. So here is the introduction rule. And that's the third argument. And here are the first two arguments. So it's H of lambda B, lambda B prime, lambda star of B, B prime, which should be equal to what? Well, here we have the step function, uh, d, so it should be d of b, b prime. We peel off the constructor here, B, B prime, and Q. And D of B, B prime Q, we know, is of this type with the appropriate substitution carried out. So capital D of lambda B, lambda B prime, lambda star B, B prime Q. So uh, that gives the right type to this. And then this uh, is correctly typed because of this and the substitution that we have carried out. So this is the elimination rule. Uh, and, uh, and the equality rule, including the second line here below the inference bar. So we are now uh, at the point um, analogous to where we were uh, last time uh, after having given the uh, Boole star rules, if you remember. Mm. And then it remains to see that uh, from these uh, new rules, we can... Um, we get the correct interpretation uh, of the standard rules because uh, what we have to see to after all is that the standard rules come out valid uh, in the model. So let's see. Um, with the formation rule it's uh, easy because um, I simply have to define uh, pi of AB star
and uh, see to it that pi of AB star is a uh, relation over pi AB. And uh, pi of AB star is, of course, defined by means of the operator pi star. Since it's a model, uh, the, uh, the model star should uh, operate compositionally, as usual. But now, um, uh, this single argument gets multiplied to uh, three arguments. So a, a, a star. And similarly, for the second argument, b, b, b star. And this, uh, by the um, pi star formation rule, is a relation between pi of AB and itself, as it should be. So that uh, handles the pi formation rule. Now, the pi introduction rule is not uh, much more difficult. Uh, we have to uh, define the companion that is the star of lambda b here. And uh, we simply put lambda b star to be in the analogous way here lambda star, which, remember, really had nine arguments. But I'm only showing the last three. So it's lambda star of uh, b, b and b star, I suppose. So we get um, lambda star of b, b and uh, b star, which is precisely the q here. So lambda b, b star, which is in uh, pi star. Of precisely these arguments. of uh, lambda b and lambda b. You see, I, I'm validating this rule in the model, which is to say that I have to uh, define a, lambda b, a companion to lambda b, and the companion to lambda b is uh, something lambda b star which proves that lambda b is related to itself following the general pattern of the model. So the um, introduction and elimination rule, uh, sorry, the formation and the introduction rules, they are easily handled. <coughs> Uh, by means of the, the star axioms. But we now come to the um, uh, elimination and equality rules. And uh, just as in the case uh, of Boole, if you remember, uh, that is um, much more delicate. Uh, so we now have to be careful to... I think we keep this and I take this away. So let's look at the elimination rule uh, up to there. 
Uh, what, how do the uh, premises come out in the model? Uh, well, uh, C of Z star becomes a relation between C of Z and C of Z prime. So we will have C star of Z, Z prime R, say, is a relation between C of C and C of Z prime for Z in phi A, B uh, and Z prime also in pi A, B. <coughs> and R proving that they are related. So that's uh, how this comes out in the model. And uh, now the second premise. So C has a single argument, which is to say that C star uh, will necessarily have three arguments. Let's call them F, F prime and Q. And uh, That should be a proof that lambda f and lambda f prime are related via the relation that interprets uh, uh, capital C. So it should be a proof that C star of lambda f, lambda f prime and lambda star f f prime q which is now a relation uh, i mean it's this is the star of that which is a relation uh, between uh, C of lambda f and C of lambda f prime. So this should hold between lambda of f and, no, sorry. <coughs> you see, we have C of f here. So it should be it should hold between C of F and uh, C of F prime. And uh, this is in the uh, same context as we had over here. Uh, this is what F is and F prime. And Q is the proof which relates Fx to F prime X prime for arbitrary X and X prime. So I think I can just write that whole context in this way. No, that is not correct either. We have to write it out because it's the um, uh, interpretation of of what we have here, uh, where now um, capital A and capital B are involved here. So that did not work. I have to write it out. So f is, as, as I said before, x in a dx, and f prime, as I said, x prime in a prime, b e prime of x, b of x prime.
So look there. Um, we take one f and one f prime from the same type there. So it would be easier to write, shorter to write just f and f prime. And then um, uh, what about Q, the third argument? Well, Q should uh, uh, do the relation that I explained over there. But now uh, we must replace the P here with um, a capital A star and the Q there with capital B star. So that was the change that I needed to make. So Q takes an x in A and an x prime in A prime and the proof P that A, they are related by A star. A prime is A. Sorry? Is it A prime A? Second occurrence of... Here? To your, just to your left. That should be... A prime is still A, right? Same A. Should be the same A here. Thank you very much. Uh, A star of X, X prime. And then uh, B star. So the abstraction here with um, of, of those three variables, followed by B star of x, x prime p applied to, so this is now a relation that we can apply to f of x and f prime of x prime. So uh, that's how the, third, the second premise here comes out in the model. And now we have to get the uh, interpretation of um, H of Z there. So what we, um, H star then is what we must define. And it will have three times as many arguments. So Z, Z prime, and R. And uh, it should uh, relate via the relation um, C star of Z, Z prime, R it should relate H of Z and H of Z prime. Uh, and here uh, Z and Z prime are in pi AB. And the R proves that they, they are related. So we must define this H star and see to it that our uh, H, H star as we define it uh, satisfies uh, this definitional equation. And uh, H of lambda b, when we put a star on it, comes out as H star of uh, lambda b lambda b prime. No, sorry. Uh, the star of this is, should be lambda b there. And lambda star of uh, b b Q 
Um, now I was right here uh, in this way in the prime there. See. We shall see in a moment. Uh, so we must set this, uh, this is uh, what corresponds to this when we put a star on it. And that should be equal to uh, little c star of uh, b b prime q. In this case. Yeah, we'll see. Um, and the typing here is uh, these are both in the star uh, star of this. So that's C star of lambda b lambda b prime lambda star of b e prime q. So that's a relation and that relation should hold between um, C of B and C of B prime. Uh, and this is for b for b in pi uh, for b in the function type x in a b of x and uh, b prime similarly and q uh, relating uh, relating b and b prime exactly as we had it over there uh, moved here so q exactly as we have it here So it's um, uh, unavoidable that this is a bit complicated. Uh, and uh, I want to show it, show it partly because um, it's necessary, at least in one place, uh, to um, go through the uh, complete details. And uh, also because uh, these new rules, the starred rules in type theory, 
are the most uh, complex rules that I have uh, worked with. So it's uh, because of the complexity of this model construction, uh, those rules are substantially more complicated than the standard rules that we have over here. But uh, it's just to uh, be courageous and um, go through everything to the uh, bitter end. And uh, I won't do it for any other operator than the uh, pi operator. So now um, I've only so far said what we want. I mean, this is what we have to satisfy in the model and we have to get it from somewhere. And of course, we have to get it from these new pi star elimination and pi star equality rules. And we get it from them by making a, a particular choice. And now I can take this out. So uh, we have to choose the uh, uh, D here in the pi star elimination rule in a clever way. So we choose D of Z, Z prime R to be C star of Z, 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 Z prime R of H of Z and h of z prime. And this is in set. Uh, and this is for z and z prime in, in the Cartesian product. And for r, the proof that they are related. So that's our choice of D. Uh, and then we have to choose uh, the proof little d in a uh, matching way. So we choose little d, uh, which has the three arguments f, f prime, q, to be c star of f, f prime, q. And the typing of a C star of F F prime Q uh, we have there. with the C of F and C of F prime. And now we use the um, uh, pi equality rule, uh, which I unfortunately have, it was standing here, uh, which uh, um, you can almost see it here. <laughs> C of we we'll put f now instead of b. C of f is h of lambda f. So C of f there can be replaced by h of lambda f. And C of f prime by h of lambda of f prime. And that We must see to it that this is the right type for that. So we must see to it that this is D of lambda f, lambda f prime, and lambda star 
of f f prime q. And I, I won't write out the, the context here. It's not necessary. Uh, so let's check this. Uh, the typing of this is already done. So it has to do with how we have defined uh, capital D. It's up here. So that's the definition of the choice of capital D. And now we apply capital D to these arguments, these three arguments. What do we get? We get C star of lambda f, lambda f prime, and this applied to h of uh, lambda f and h of lambda f prime. So it's a permissible choice of capital D and little d that we have made. And um, with this choice, what we get out from the... Um, pi star elimination and equality rules is exactly uh, what is needed for the interpret in the interpretation for the uh, elimination and equal the pi elimination and the pi equality rules. So this uh, finishes the pi case. And um, I had thought perhaps to say a few words about the universe, but um, I think it's better that um, uh, I drop that part uh, because I have two final things which are more interesting to take in, I think. Uh, and um, I could return to the uh, universe rules uh, in case uh, there is it comes up in the discussion. So instead, uh, I would like to go directly to the uh, um, proof that uh, Thierry Coquin has given, uh, uh, particularly since it is very simple and elegant, um, that uh, this model invalidates uh, the law of excluded middle. So the law of excluded middle in type theory So the usual formulation of uh, the law of excluded in type theory is to say that the type, say, x in set x or not x, is inhabited. So this is an axiom, which is to say we should have a constant c for, for this. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. We could call it EM, perhaps, for excluded middle. Um, but um, that, that is not uh, the best form to have it uh, to derive this um, contradiction. So I will use, um, without further ado, the fact that this form of it is equivalent it takes not many steps to prove that. It's equivalent to having a function delta which takes an arbitrary proposition which is the same as a set by Curry Howard uh, into a Boolean value which uh, moreover uh, satisfied that T of delta o of A, of the truth value of A, is equivalent to A, where T is the function on Boole, uh, which puts T of 
zero to absurdity and t of one to truth. As soon as you have a universe cont containing absurdity and truth, you can define uh, that discriminator t. Now, uh, having this constant as an axiom and uh, having delta satisfying this is equivalent in type theory. Now, suppose uh, that um, this is satisfied in the model. That's what we have to uh, show is impossible. Well, that means that uh, delta has to be uh, accompanied uh, by its companion, delta star. And delta star will have three arguments, which takes an a, uh, a set A and a set A prime and the relation between A and A prime P uh, into a proof uh, that Boole star holds between delta of A and delta of A prime. Now you see that's a very strong condition because whatever sets you choose, A and A prime here, there is always a relation between them. You can take the relation which is identically false or the one which is identically true or whatever you want. And hence we have a proof that um, of Boole star delta of A and delta of A prime for any A and A prime, which is the same as to say that Boole star of delta of A and delta of A prime is true for any A, A and A prime. Well, it's true for any A and A prime. It's in particular true for, for um, the false and the true. So we get we get bool star of delta of true and delta of false is true. Now remember the definition of bool star. So it was good that I treated um, the ground type bool because we need it now. A bool star was defined as the least relation of, on bool which holds both between zero and itself and between one and itself. And um, on the other hand, if we look at um, the identity relation on bool, that's the least reflexive relation on bool. So um, it's not astonishing that bool star of A, B, is materially equivalent to identity of bool and of A and B. And I will uh, only need this in one direction, namely from, uh, namely in this direction. Uh, so what is the argument there? Uh, well, if um, um, if bool star is the least a relation which identifies both zero zero and one one, then it's sufficient to show that I identifies uh, zero zero and one one uh, in this direction, and that is clear because I is reflexive, so we can put in zero and one. So um, uh, that shows the equivalence in this direction. And then there just remains a little derivation in a natural deduction here. So assume a bool star. Uh, no, sorry, not assume. We have already established a bool star of delta of the true 
and delta of the force. Uh, we know that already. And uh, because of this, we can replace bool star by the identity on bool instead. But now, um, uh, by the introduction rule for true in natural deduction, uh, true is true. Uh, so um, because of uh, this equivalence, uh, we can conclude from true to T of delta of true. Um, but now delta of true is uh, equal to delta of false, is identical to delta of false. So by the usual elimination rule for identity, we can conclude uh, T of delta of false instead. And now use, use this for <coughs> falsity instead. We get that from T of delta of falsity, we can derive absurdity. And that's the contradiction. So this model, which is the uh, uh, model for extensionality, the model that interprets <coughs> everything extensionally, actually refutes excluded middle. Now, uh, at first sight, that may uh, be astonishing because uh, these new rules, uh, uh, the start rule elimination, uh, introduction elimination, and the equality rules that I have introduced, they follow surely the uh, standard pattern, so there is nothing strange coming in there, which means that if we add excluded middle, we should still be consistent with set theory. Mm, because type theory of true has an interpretation in set theory. But, uh, and that is certainly the case, uh, just adding excluded middle in this form is not sufficient for producing the contradiction. It's uh, uh, requiring it in the model that produces the contradiction. It's, it's, um, uh, just requiring the, this is equivalent to what we had up to here, but it's when we say that in the model we should have a delta, that is, we should have a delta star as a companion to delta, or if you want that delta is extensional, that is what produces the uh, contradiction. And as I said, um, at one uh, occasion, whether it was in the first or the uh, second lecture. Uh, this is a situation that we are familiar with from the intuitionistic theory of spreads and choice sequences. Uh, that theory contains axioms which uh, usually one takes it in the form of continuity axioms, which actually are in contradiction with the law of excluded middle. So we are now um, with the uh, homotopy type theory, which I haven't uh, mentioned here, but uh, I suppose many of you who are somewhat familiar with homotopy type theory can have seen that uh, this um, is part, so to say, <laughs> of that larger research project. Um, we are in the situation that um, the theory of spreads and choice sequences, which Brouwer started to develop during the second half of the First World War in 1916, and the first printed uh, paper about it is from 1918, just after the war. Uh, that theory, which, um, uh, on which he was pretty much alone, 
uh, during his lifetime, uh, but which Kreisel and Trollstra uh, contributed to substantially in the late 60s, uh, and which was, uh, and their contribution was um, redressed in uh, topos theoretic terms in the early 80s by van der Hoeven and Mordeik. Um, that is one line of, of development uh, concerning which little has been done after uh, uh, van der Hoeven's and Mordeik's uh, work, except uh, I should perhaps mention Mark van Atten, who has done considerable work from a more uh, philosophical and historical perspective on the theory of uh, choice sequences. But as far as the technical work, very little has been done after van der Hoeven and Mordeik. But now um, you see this uh, homotopy type theory has uh, arisen, and I'm not an expert on who has done what here, but it seems to me uh, we should put the starting point in the mid-90s with the groupoid model of type theory by Hoffmann and Streicher. And then 10 years later, as I have understood it, what I must ask Steve after the lecture, uh, that Steve and uh, Wojewodski independently made uh, suggestions in this direction. And uh, Wojewodski somewhat later uh, proposed a new axiom to add to type theory, which he calls the univ univalence uh, axiom, and uh, proposed as a basis for this um, type theoretic homotopy theory. Uh, now, uh, as soon as that uh, axiom is added to type theory, then we are exactly in this situation uh, that um, uh, we were previously in the theory of spreads and choice sequences, namely that we are in contradiction with the uh, with classical logic. And uh, uh, this homotopy type theory uh, development, which now has gone on for uh, five years roughly, uh, has had no inspiration whatsoever uh, from um, Brouwer's theory of spreads and choice sequences. Uh, 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 at least I have felt very much alone in trying to uh, relate uh, these two developments. Uh, but that seems to me uh, to be um, uh, very promising uh, for the future and something which is quite urgent to do. And here we have seen at least one indication of why the uh, uh, situation is similar for these theories. Uh, and um, it's interesting because um, uh, before uh, 1916, uh, Brouwer's intuitionism was more like uh, Bishop's uh, constructive mathematics. That is, there were no uh, spreads and choice sequences in it. Uh, and uh, at that stage, it was yet not yet in contradiction with uh, classical logic. But Brouwer had these... Uh, uh, had his unique uh, topological intuition and pushed it so far that he thought that um, uh, you should really start with the spreads and choice sequences. This, the whole of mathematics should be based on spreads and choice sequences. And you can see that from his choice uh, of term uh, for the concept of spread in his first uh, paper from 1918. He he called it menge, uh, that is, set. So he, sh he thought that the spreads should play the analogous role to sets in his intuitionistic mathematics. And now we see um, um, many, many years later, uh, someone, and I'm thinking of Voivodsky, uh, proposing... <laughs> It's a very bold thing. I mean, in using the term univalent foundations, univalent foundations of mathematics, that is, uh, he is implicitly claiming that all of mathematics should be put on a homotopic uh, foundation. And uh, 
That's very similar to what Brouwer did uh, long ago, that it should be put on a topological foundation because at least it, it is agreed that homotopy theory is part of uh, topology, of all of topology. So uh, my hope for the future is that uh, this line of investigation will be uh, pursued and um, at best we one could see these two areas actually merge into a coherent whole because uh, um, at least for the theory of spreads and choice sequences that would be a very considerable step uh, forward. I mean we have um, no uh, exposition of the theory of spreads and choice sequences that can match uh, type theory uh, presently uh, and it um, needs uh, first of all to get um, a type theoretic foundation and then one would hope that simultaneously it would um, merge with homotopy theory which is now already being put on a type theoretic foundation uh, in the ongoing work uh, during the last five years. So these are my hopes for the future. Thank you. It's not that close. Um, so there is a considerable distance still between what I have presented here and the univalence axiom. Uh, although um, mm, there is motivation behind, so to say, but um, I, I cannot make such a direct connection. Rather, I should say that uh, um, the uh, univalence axiom is not validated in the model that I am uh, that I have described here. Um, yeah, so, univalence axiom uh, is bidirectional, um, and uh, in one direction it's validated, but not in the other direction. So do you think or do you know that the, uh, that the interpretation goes before inductive types or W types? Um, I, I, don't know, I don't know in the sense that uh, I have done the W type, but uh, I have done the sigma types, for instance, and other types. So the pattern is completely clear and I no doubts. And when it gets to... Uh, that complexity, uh, then um, I think those who can handle uh, Koch or Agda are um, the right people to do the checking. But should it also work for co-inductive? And um, that is, op I mean, the whole treatment of co-inductive types in type theory is still, for me at least, I still consider it open. What is the right way of doing the co-inductive definitions? But others are um, um, not so cagey as I am and uh, think that they are already there and <laughs> adequately treated. Mm. Yeah? I think the, um, another connection <coughs> with univalence is that the model can be understood according to a recent uh, result of Mike Schulman's as a pre-sheaf model of a certain kind. And uh, if, if you assume that the type theory you begin with, without the stars, has univalence, then what Mike has shown is that that's preserved by this construction. Mm -hmm. So the um, univalence axiom so this was, in fact, one of the first examples that 
Mike gave, and the idea was to answer a question that was put by Wojewodski, whether the univalence axiom has essentially different models from the original one that he gave in the con complexes. And this shows that it does, in fact, have other models and that it's stable under certain model constructions, one of them being pre sheaves of this kind. Mm -hmm. so, so although it's, it doesn't hold in the model, it's compatible with this sort of point of view, yeah. which I think speaks toward your conjecture or hope mm -hmm. that one will eventually be able to unify the univalent point of view with the topological spread theoretic point of view of type theory. Yeah. They're compatible. Yeah. And as for models of the univalence axiom, uh, one should mention sec second at least to Wojewodski's own model uh, which is in uh, ZF or ZFC, I can't remember anyway, high-powered high set theoretic mathematics. Um, uh, Cocon has matched that uh, by um, making the setoid model for type theory in all details. And uh, that uh, model uh, can also be made to satisfy the univalence axiom. And it's a much sim simpler model. Uh, as it's an initial segment of Wojewodski's model. Right, but it's sufficient for the validation of the uh, univalence. But only with one universe. Wojewodski's model does it with the whole tower of the universe. Yeah, so then you have to do the setoid model with the tower of universes also, but that's... Uh, small difference. Mm -hmm. Any further questions? Well done, thank you.